Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're reviewing the new Range Rover Velar with the four-cylinder engine. Before we get into this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Land Rover here in Lehigh, Utah, for giving me some time with this Velar. I'm going to include a link to their website in the description down below, so you can check out this Velar and the rest of the inventory that they currently have. If you have any questions, just ask for Jordan. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Powering this is a turbocharged two liter four cylinder that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 22 around town and then 26 on the highway with power outputs being 247 horsepower and then 269 pound feet of torque. Now before we go over the front end, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the hood, of course, we got the Range Rover logo front and center, and then you guys can see we have Range Rover there on either side, these little blacked out trim pieces. Coming down below, really cool daytime running lights with the headlights. You guys can see here with the grill, how it's kind of like flush with that whole section. And then looking down below, you can see the blacked out trim right there, parking sensors in the front end, and we actually have like a little front splitter. Putting it all together, I do think that the front end of the Velar looks pretty snazzy. Cover on the side here, our tire wheel setup is 255, 50, 20 in the front and over in the rear. And you guys can see with the wheels completely blacked out. And speaking of blacked out, you guys can see the trim there on the front, also on the side and then along the side here with the mirror caps and the roof. And so when you put it all together, it gives the Velar a really cool, sleek design. So here's a key fob. We have our unlock function or lock function. This is for the lights and then that is for the hatch to open it up. And then we have the Land Rover logo there on the back of the key. So popping into the rear here, you guys can see that we've got a cargo cover built in from the factory. And then down below, you can see there's quite a bit of storage space with all of the goodies that come with this from the factory. And then underneath here, we do have a spare size or spare, full size spare rather. And then up top, press that button right there and that will lower the hatch right back down. Love the look of the taillight here for the Velar. I think that's really distinctive. And then Range Rover there in the center and then Velar all blacked out. And then you got more parking sensors here at the bottom with a receiver hitch. Putting it all together, let me know you guys think about the style of the Velar, but again, it just has a really cool look for an SUV. Now taking a look at the door panel here, soft touch here at the top, and then you guys can see with the trim down below. And then I like that here in the center. It's kind of just like gray. And then you get your window control and then handle as well, which looks interesting. And then here are these seats. So these are the more baseline seats you can get with the Velar, but they're still very nice. Now here's your leg room. It's actually really solid. We've got a little storage pocket there. We've got vents here in the back, heated seats. We have our own charging ports as well. And then headroom back here, solid. And of course, we got a cup holder armrest. Now taking a look at the door panel, it's soft touch here at the top. Then you guys can see the leather trim down below. If the camera will pick it up. There you go, that exists. All of our window controls here, we've got our memory seats as well. You can see again the handle. And then we do have blind spot monitoring at the mirrors. And then here is the seat itself. You guys can see again, perforated all down the center. Then we have all of our power adjustments there on the side. And look at the pedals, they actually look pretty fancy. You've got that for the hatch, by the way, and then really nice trim here on the dash. So taking a look at the steering wheel, really nice trim all around. You've got premium looking and feeling paddle shifters on the back. We've got controls for like the heated steering wheel here on the steering wheel, adaptive cruise control, your lane keep assist. We got controls for the center stack, voice command controls as well. And then you guys can see the regular stocks there on the back. Now here's our gauge cluster, full digital gauge cluster with the Velar and Look at this, we can scroll through some different menus, see different bits of info on the vehicle and also change setup. So you can change like how the display looks. For example, this is the like, I think it's the tri-gauge uh, setup right now, but you can do like just two gauges, for example, or one gauge, I believe. Anyways, good setup, looks cool. And then you guys can see we've got a backup camera with trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel and resolution with the camera systems, really solid overall. And then this is the new infotainment system setup. Um, so we have a shortcut uh, like tab right here for like the seats, also for the drive modes. And then if you press the little temperature thing, it pulls up the climate tab as well for either side. And then that's just for the drive modes as well. So basically they doubled down on all the shortcuts because, well, everything is built into this infotainment system now. So it makes sense that they make everything accessible. Now I've got kind of like soft touch here on the dash. Then you guys can see down below with the leather trim and then this is our like charging area is what I am calling it and then we don't have any controls here other than the shifter like 
they've just kept it super minimalist with the design. Got some cup holder action, and then you guys can see the double center console. Kind of interesting with the lids right there. I've always wondered like why these open separately, and they hold in place, but like you couldn't rest your arm on it. Anyways, you guys can see here with the glove box, mine with felt. And then up top, this does have the controls here for the full panoramic center. Well, there's way too much glare to see anyways, so total MSRP $71,483 on this particular Velar. And let's see how it drives. Let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility over the hood. Both of the mirrors, just do a blind spot monitoring throughout the rest of the rear. And I just noticed this one has the uh, solar attenuating windshield because it's got the lines in the windshield. Now, okay, yeah, so the fan speed's set to lower. I just want to make sure the vents don't get too loud because then it'd make the audio potentially kind of meh in the video. But anyways, setting off in the Velar. <laughs> um, so a few things. I just drove the inline six before this, and so it'll be interesting to see my thoughts on the turbo four cylinder after driving the inline six, which has, I think 100, yeah, 150 horsepower more. That is a huge difference. So one more liter, two more cylinders, 150 horsepower. And you do feel it. 100%. You do feel it. I mean, this isn't bad but does not have the same level of power as the six cylinder. But I mean, it keeps the pace really well. In terms of ride quality and all that, it seems like it's the same. So the Velar is comfortable, the seats are comfortable. Now this has the, uh, can, the that are considered to be like the less premium seats in the Velar. Um, the other one I drove had like the other leather seats. The other leather seats are softer with the feel and everything. But the thing I like about these leather seats is that they hold up better over time i've noticed um it seems like the like really smooth premium soft leather doesn't hold up as well as the leather that has like the nice cowhide texture this has the cowhide texture so there is that that uh, difference when we do like a little turn here well, that's when we'll get our full-blown acceleration yeah, it's it's smooth uh, again 20 inch wheels now i am not really noticing a difference between this and the velar that i reviewed that had the 22s so I guess that going up two inches in wheel size doesn't really make it so this rides worse. I do see that as a positive, so that's good. And yeah, it, the thing that I feel like really defines this car is just the comfort. It's not particularly sporty, it's, um, it's just comfortable. The damping might be a little bit better with this, with the smaller wheels going over that little, not, not the biggest bump on the planet, but going over a little bump, kind of, kind of felt the damping was a little bit different. Okay, so we are going to get our acceleration here with the two liter. Yeah, so get the M96 if you can afford it. <laughs> this isn't bad, but yeah, the inline six I felt like was the sweet spot when it came to power and acceleration. This, on the other hand, it's, it's not bad, but it, it is a little bit lackluster, if I'm being honest. I don't I, like, and the thing that confused me is if you look at the fuel economy rating, it's not really any better in this than the inline six. Now, my guess is Range Rover has the Land Rover rather has this because of emissions. Because four cylinders, even if they get the same fuel economy or less fuel economy, they'll produce fewer emissions. So that's my guess as to why they've done this is because of emissions. But yeah, if, uh, if you can, uh, that, that's my take. So I think the Velar is a great vehicle. I actually really like how this drives, how it looks, the interior. I like the minimalist design, but I do think that you should at least get the six cylinder. And if Range Rover can, they should bring back the SVA because V8 in this car is so fun.